Hi guys, what are we gonna do today? You know what we're gonna do today? We're gonna make prairie boots. I mean, who doesn't love prairie boots? So anyway, we're just gonna get started here. I'm gonna have a pattern in the description and you can just follow along now to see how we're doing it. But let's get started. So here is the template you'll, you'll get that you can download. And what I did is when I printed it out, I put it onto some cardstock to make it a little bit easy. You're gonna need to add your seam allowance. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Trace around this with a pencil. And I'm using muslin, but you can use any fabric that you would like. If you want two boots, you're gonna trace two boots. I'm just gonna show you one because if you know how to do one, you know how to do the other. So when you cut this These out, are your two options. you can either go over and sew on this drawn line or if you'd prefer, you can cut this out. I'm just cutting about a quarter to a half inch from the drawn line. But at the top, I'm just gonna cut right across. Like it longer, you can make this taller. I don't need a seam allowance on the top, just on the edges. So we've got my two layers of fabric here I'm cutting out and then we're going to sew them together next. Okay, let's sew on this drawn line. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and sew around this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is clip our corner so you get a nice, nice, when you turn it inside out. You could trim this down. I don't even worry about that. Like at the heel, you gotta be very careful and I'm just making little slits all the way around this corner right here. So do not cut through the seam. So be very careful with that. And then here is the next corner. and then also right in here. Okay, so now that we've done this, when we turn this inside out, it won't get all bunched up in here. You could have just trimmed it really close. I just find this works just perfect for me. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out. So to get all my seam smooth, you can use a chopstick, um, a back of a paintbrush, a hemostat, anything you would like. Of course, make sure your cap is on it if you're using a writing instrument. And I'm just pushing these seams out. And then you can see how it gets rounded. So, the next thing we're gonna do, trim these strings, turn the top down about a half inch, and do a quick running stitch around the top. So fold this top edge about a half inch in, and just do a quick running stitch. and then just knot this off. But I, I didn't want them to stick together when I'm painting them, and I found what worked really, really well is just take two of your plastic bags, like you get at a store, or you might have laying around extra bags, and very carefully, if you're using scissors, hemostats would probably be better. I'm just kind of pushing this bag in, and one in the toe, all the way across the bottom of the foot, and then I'm using one more for the leg section. Okay, now we are going to paint this. So I am just going to use a very watered down paint to paint this. You can do any color you would like. What I found worked really well is I just have a little mister bottle and I am just gonna lightly spray this fabric. And it really seemed to work so much better when I did that because the fabric was not so dry. So the paint soaks in much easier. This paint that I made, is it's very watered down. Okay, so we're just gonna let this dry. Okay, so this is dry. I'm just gonna do a quick sand on this. And you could do a dry brush of another color, just depending what you want your boot to look like. Don't sand too hard or you will make a hole in your fabric. Now I'm just gonna use a clear wax and any clear wax will do. And then I'm gonna add just a teeny bit of black wax, but you could do a white wax, do no other wax. You could uh, do your favorite aging technique. Just whatever color and way you would like your boot to look. 
Okay, let's sew some laces on here. So I'm gonna pull my bags out now. Line my pattern up somewhat. It's gonna feel just a little smaller because of the sewing. And we'll have little guidelines for your laces, but you can just eyeball it. And I'm using this pokey tool. So whatever pokey tool you have, and I'm going through both layers of fabric. And you can use whatever type of cording you would like. I'm actually using a waxed thread, starting here, going across. And I'm using a large eye needle, starting at the top and going across. So I went down through the next one. And you'll see, this will make sense as we go along. And then I'm gonna have a space. I'm just going down at a diagonal pattern. So I have these diagonals. Then I'm just gonna go straight across at the bottom one, and then come up and go diagonally the opposite way all the way up. Technically, you could lace them however you want to. So at the top, I'm just gonna do my diagonal up here, and then go straight across through the same one that we started with. So I tied a, a bow at the top. So I used about a yard. I have a little extra, but I think that works well, just depending on how tightly you are stitching. Okay, let's stuff the bottom of it. So I wanted the toe to be a little, I didn't want it to be so flat, and you don't need to do this. I'm just using a piece of my, it's like a shipping paper, and I'm using about a half a sheet of this. But you could use tissue paper, you could do rags, fabric, you could do whatever you want. Just squish some of it up. And once again, very carefully push it in here with your favorite tool. Okay, so now I filled mine full of drives and I wanted to add something else fun. So I'm gonna show you how I added my girl in the top of this. To make her, what I did is, I'm just taking a piece of muslin, just cotton, and I'm using a five by seven piece of chipboard. I believe this is Mod Podge. You could use any type of a glue you would like. Then I'm gonna lay my fabric over the top of that. Now, if you've seen a few of my other videos, I have been using my cage doll stamp for a lot of projects. So if you end up getting the stamp, hopefully you have a million fun ideas. And I'm just gonna be using the top of her. I stamp her with a permanent black ink, and then we're going to heat set it. So I see where my cardstock is. So I am going to heat set her, and then we are going to spray her to age her. So I'm gonna use a piece of parchment paper and put it over the top of her, and I am going to iron her, high heat, no steam, and just heat set her onto this fabric. So what I'm gonna do next is I have a mixture of uh, liquid tan root dye with some water, and I'm just gonna spray this on here. Lay my parchment paper over the top. Okay, so now you just wanna make sure this is dry and we're gonna cut her out. So now I'm just gonna cut her out. And I'm cutting through the fabric and the cardstock. So if you wanted to stamp all the pieces separately, you could even join it together with brads. Just be careful when you're cutting between the fingers. Put her in, and if you wanted to, you could even, with drieds coming out for fall, and you could even do a little banner or a bunting saying, a fun saying, or um, Thanksgiving, or I mean, anything you would like. But this is just kind of fun, and then you could hang it up. Okay guys, wasn't this easy? This really was easy. 
And if one boot is good, you know 50 is better. So you can see this was really quick and fast. And I hope you give it a shot. And even just with the girl on the fabric, it makes it so much more substantial and fill up full of whatever you would love. You know, and even at Christmas, I'm thinking maybe doing them in white and doing some fun Christmas things coming out of them. But whatever you do, have fun.